Everybody has different opinions on what the Lord's Supper is all about. Join us today on Back to Our Roots as we talk about this topic. Welcome once again to Back to Our Roots. I'm your host, Pastor Alex Schussler, and my co-host... Rachel Hyman. And we want to welcome and thank you that you've joined us today. Our topic today, we're going to be speaking about the Lord's table. People also use the term communion mm -hmm. when they're talking in terms. Rachel, what, I, I know we've shared some pretty interesting stories. What was your experience as, as a Jewish believer the first time you were introduced to that? Well, my mom actually converted to Catholicism when I was about 12 years old, wow. <laughs> when she remarried, yeah. And for the first time in my life, we visited a Catholic church and I saw my mom open her mouth like this as the priest put this round white wafer in her mouth. And I remember participating with her because she pressured us into it, but feeling like I had absolutely no idea what I was doing. And everybody was just standing in line waiting for their wafer and calling this somehow the body of Christ somehow. And uh, to be honest, I was really weirded out. <laughs> I was really weirded out. You know what's interesting is that uh, I have to say my experience was almost identical. Really? It wasn't my mom, but it was friends of mine that they also were Catholics and, you know, I had gone to church with them and here I was a nice Jewish boy from Miami going, you know, to the Catholic church and watching them. I sat in the back. I didn't go forward. Oh, yeah. I sat in the back and you I were watched. You were a good Jewish boy. <laughs> well, unlike I, me, I watched them, you know, take the wafer and, and drink and mm -hmm. the whole body of Christ thing. I was so confused. It was weird, huh? I didn't. What are they talking about? <laughs> it was like this little, you know, I, I know that. You know, there, there's so many different ideas and concepts mm -hmm. about the Lord's table, about communion, about its origins. Mm -hmm. uh, what really is it? Um, what does it mean? What can we draw from it? Um, and, and we're going to be talking about that in great detail today. And, and we're going to especially take a look at the Passover. Okay. Because without really understanding the Passover, mm. I don't think that we can fully understand what exactly happened, especially when we go back talking in the context of Jesus and the first Lord's table mm -hmm. when he shared it with his disciples. So before we get too deep into the program, we want to invite our friend Alexander Bolitnikov, Dr. Alexander Bolitnikov. <laughs> we call him Sasha to join us. He is our, as we say, resident theologian. He brings a deeper meaning to each uh, topic. Sasha. Yeah, How you doing, buddy? Good to see you, Rachel. Good to see you, Alex. Good to see you, Sasha. So today, Sasha, we're talking about the Lord's table. And we're talking about the Lord's table and, and how it draws, without a doubt, its traditions from what is known as the Passover. So, um, Sasha, why don't we just jump into it? And uh, we want to share um, what we understand and what we know about the Passover service to set the the groundwork, because we're going to refer to this quite a bit through our, our uh, talk today. Um, one of the things that's important, I think, for us to understand is that the Jewish people are very based on tradition, that you can almost count on that the things that were done hundreds and hundreds of years ago are pretty much done even today. Um, Maybe some differences, but it, the elements remain mm -hmm. very much the same, right? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And uh, we will see <clears throat> in our program, in our discussion, that indeed uh, they were the same, uh, at least uh, in, in, in many ways as we see them today <clears throat> in Judaism. And uh, uh, basically, uh, it, 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 first of all, we need to say that uh, what is known as a last supper today, the, the story Jesus said with the disciples mm -hmm. in the upper room, uh, the Gospel of Matthew, mm -hmm. chapter 26, clearly speaks and calls it a Passover. Yes. The disciples ask Jesus a specific question. Uh, when, where shall we prepare a Passover for you? Right, right. What confuses many Christians is they look at the 
Passover described in the book of Exodus. Exactly. Where Passover mm -hmm. is the lamb, so many Christians erroneously, uh, erroneously assume that uh, disciples actually killed the lamb and they were having a sacrifice in the upper right. room. But, you know, as we talked about in a previous program, we, we dealt with Passover in, in detail and uh, we opened up and explored the idea that Jesus was, in fact, that perfect lamb, that at the time when the lambs were being slaughtered, Jesus was dying on the cross for us. So, so what they're doing is, is, it is what we would know as a Seder, Exactly. Okay. Well, but they, it wasn't they, the slaughter of the exactly. lamb. Exactly. This is this has nothing to do with the temple Passover sacrifice. Exactly. So so let's talk. Even just though a it was on the same exact time as the was, regular Passover, or it was, was it a little earlier? Day, exactly. Well, we have it's good question, Rachel. Uh, we have to see the progression. Uh, we're talking 14th of Nisan. On the 14th of Nisan, people of Israel. Uh, had this last night with their belts uh, on on their clothes, with their shoes on, with the stuff. Now we're talking were in the eating. context of the Exodus. Yes, that's okay. That, well, what happens next? This is one time event in history. What happens next? The book of Deuteronomy comes in. First, Deuteronomy 16 strictly forbids to kill any lamb in the house. Right. And hmm. that's why the we have. In the temple tradition, a commemoration of Exodus through sacrificial service. And, and really that becomes the, the basic concept of the Passover itself, is that it is now a ritualistic commemoration, remembering those things that happened mm. um, as God drew the people out of Egypt. And, and that's why Leviticus 23 sets up the Passover sacrifice, which is different than what was happening in actually in Egypt. So, but as Alex pointed out, uh, what Jesus and disciples did happened before, and you know, basically a day ahead of the Passover sacrifice. In other words, it happened at the beginning of 14th of Nisan while the Passover sacrifice at the temple is at the end of 14 of So, so wow. you know, this I may be stating the obvious, but remember that we're reckoning time from sundown to sundown. Exactly. That represents a day. Right. Not as we would in Western culture okay. think it's when the sun comes up, that's the beginning of a day. So they were having the Seder when they were supposed to be having the Seder, exactly. and Jesus died when the lamb was supposed to be slain. Exactly, but that's what you mentioned, the Seder is just a commemorative Ritualistic meal. Ritualistic meal, yeah. exactly. Not even ritual, but commemorative. Ritual was at the temple, that was... Yeah, but I, I think that we could say, yeah. because there were specific things that, that we need to talk about real quickly that that God commanded that there were elements that we, that the Jewish people needed to bring in, things that needed to be oh, present. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. So let's, let's talk about that a little bit, Sasha. So, so in the first century, I know that things were added later, but in the first century, what can we, for the most part, understand were the elements that were used in that ritualistic meal, what we know as the Seder. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, what we see uh, very specific, traditional, is usage of the uh, wine. Okay, so there, there's the wine. There's also... Unfermented, of course. Well, some people would say that. <laughs> We're, that's another discussion. That's another discussion. For, an, for another, another program. Yeah, let's not yeah. discuss that <laughs> um, part for right. now. Um, and I don't think that that's the point at this point. Um, <laughs> So, um, what, what other elements did we have, Sasha? We have so the wine. We have the wine, and that's what sets it apart from Exodus 12, which never talks about the wine. Uh -huh. So, we have particularly four cups of wine, which are maybe like this. So it's kind of a large cups. Okay. And uh, we have some herbs. Uh, yeah, the bitter herbs, uh, the unleavened bread known as matzah. Um, and uh, the, uh, well, they had some sweet, you know, today it's used, it's uh, what's called harosid, I don't know Which how is, to explain it. Well, yeah, it's, it. it's basically 
um, apples and honey and, and nuts. Mm -hmm. And mixed, raisins, maybe? Yeah, mixed yeah. together in, in like a little... Sort of remembering, yeah. remembering this hard labor, the mortar they did for the bricks. Right, right, right. You know, so this is the element, uh, major element. But, but in the context of the Lord's table, in the context of the discussion that, we're, that we have here, the, the two things that are definitely come up is the matzah and the cups, and the cups of the fruit of the vine. And the uh, bitter herbs. Because they dip. Yeah, they dip, and you remember how Jesus dipped the matzah into the bitter herbs and gave it to Judas? And, well, and he said, yeah, the one who eats after this is the one that's going to betray me. Yeah. Um, so. so, but the cups, this is how we know that it was traditional rabbinic Passover. Soup. Well, this also becomes then uh, evidence, I believe, that yes, one, Jesus and his followers... Um, were in fact celebrating a Passover Seder, without a doubt, based on the setup, the elements, and, and, and everything. Um, the other thing, just as a little sidebar, Sasha, and I wonder what your feeling is about this. I've always thought that this picture that we have, like Leonardo da Vinci paints of the oh, Last yeah, Supper, oh, yeah. you know, of all these men sitting at the table, you know, straight across in a line, is not true at all. This is that, like this is like a picture of the uh, dining room of Italian convent. <laughs> so, so I think more more uh, more likely they were sitting in like a horseshoe type of shape. The tables would have been more like that. It maybe. was very low because first well, of all they, would they have were sat. they were kind of sitting down on the floor, right? And they were supposed to recline. Exactly. You know, you got that's your, that's how we know that when when it talks about how John laid his, his head on the bosom of Jesus, you know, he didn't like in the chair pull Jesus over and, and no, because of how they were laying, yeah, it's it like, was very easy for him just to lay back and exactly. there he was. You, you, but, you, you lean your right elbow against the left knee of your uh, and What does that body. symbolize again? Being free. Unity. Well, and being free, and too. Being it free. was a symbol of freedom. Yeah, exactly. That, that, a, that, right. a, that a rich man ate reclining while a poor man ate standing. Mm. Um, yeah, that's, and, and that's so, right, that's right. Uh, and, and the other thing is, is that I also think that there was way more than just the disciples there. Because I think Jesus is acting as the leader of their family, their group. And, and Passover and the Seder meal is a family event. It centers on the children, teaching them, passing on the story of what happened. Yeah, so there would have been women and children. Deuteronomy in, says in the you picture teach as well. it, you know, you teach it to your children. Teach it, teach it, teach it. When your child asks, that's, and they even haven't, you know, the four we don't, four well, yeah. Which is four. part of the service today, yeah. So um, we, 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 we've already talked about the, the ritual based on Exodus chapter 12, and, and we've kind of brought it up to date. But let's really focus now on what exactly Jesus is doing, because we don't want to shortcut any of that. We want to be able to take yes, our time. Yes, what, what, what we can see, there are four cups during the, the uh, Passover Seder. Um, even today. Yeah, even today. Uh, and, and those, I'm sorry, those come directly out of Exodus. Those are the promises that God made. Yes. The I will promises. They are, right? Yeah, they are based on Exodus 6. Uh, the I will take you out of Egypt, I will make you my children, I will free you from the bondage. I will redeem you with So yeah. this is kind of based, it's more like maybe a homiletical base. The each cup symbolizes the act of God, the, the redemptive act of God during Exodus. And it's important that is that the disciple that Jesus does it as Exodus because uh, we got to remember, especially in the Gospel of Matthew and Gospel of John, Jesus is viewed as this leader of a new spiritual Exodus from the bondage of sin. Mm. And so, <coughs> when what happens is we see Gospel of Luke. In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 22... So, so let, me, let me read this real quick. Gospel of Luke, chapter 22. I'm going to begin at verse 17. Um, and he took the cup, he being Jesus. He took the cup, and when he had given thanks 
Um, he said, take this, divide, divide it amongst yourselves, for I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Okay, so let's stop right there and let's talk about the cup because the next thing is he's going to go on and he's going to talk about the bread. Exactly. Right? This is what makes it uh, very unconventional for many people because everybody, especially in Protestant tradition, know you take the bread first, first. and then you take the wine. And in Luke, verse 17, he takes the cup and then he takes the bread. Mm. It's in reverse. But if you read next verse 20, then it's again the cup. Yeah. So you have two cups. This is definitely the, the uh, hint. It's a very strong hint that there were other, you know, we'll see another, another cup. So we have two cups out of four. What these two cups are? The, 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 this uh, one cup, which is in verse 17, this is a, a cup of uh, plagues. That's the time when they drink this cup of uh, wine and they read the story, uh, you know, today they take the dip, the finger, and they remember. Put a the, drop as we dro remember each one of the each plagues. Each of the plagues. So they, they, they read how God re rescued Israel uh, with wonders and signs and things like this. Right. And what about the second one? The second cup is called the cup of redemption. And that's interesting because when they take, uh, the, no, the th that's the third, the third cup, right, right. you know, that's the cup of redemption. So the second cup. So the second cup is the cup of plagues. Okay, what about the first cup? The first cup is called the cup of sanctification. Okay, so we're going to jump. Where are you getting all of that from? Is that like so tradition? So this is, this is, it's drawn from Exodus chapter 6. Okay. And then it's rabbinic tradition, applying okay. the things, the promises that God made to the Hebrews in the context of the Passover. And okay. the Gospel of Luke and the Gospel of Matthew prove that this is, was the case. Because what you have, if you go sequence, you read the cup of, you drink the first cup, that's the sanctification. You, you read the prayer of blessing, you do the washing of the hands. And right. by the way, John 13 describes how uh, everybody fights who's going to wash the hands of Jesus because that's the best disciples, you know, mother of John and James wants some of them close by. And Jesus said, nobody washes my hands. I'm going to wash everybody's feet. Right, which he, he takes on a whole nother thing. So that's, so. that's, that's <laughs> the one thing he definitely uses and changes. And then you have cup of uh, plagues. That's when uh, you read the story of Exodus. Right. And after that, now the we get to the third cup. Now, I, now the third cup, Sasha. Let me interject. Uh, I think is it is it more than likely at the point of this narrative that this is where we are. Exactly. That we're at the third cup. That's the third cup. Because this is when he says, redemption. "I'm not going to drink it." And and again, this is one of those things that so touches my heart. That here's Jesus saying, take this cup mm -hmm. and drink it. But in the order of the service, this, in fact, is the cup of redemption. That's the cup mm -hmm. of redemption. And that's the cup that represents his blood. But let's talk about the bread, too. So right. wait, well, do, do Jews today have that third cup? And to them, does that signify redemption It as is well? still redemption. It is yeah. still redemption. Yeah. Looking for the coming of the Messiah. Of the Messiah, exactly. So if we continue reading, it says, And then he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Now, uh, one of the things also that I think most Christians miss out on is that, you know, the, the, the little pieces of bread or wafers or whatever, unleavened bread that goes out, usually comes out in a tray and yeah. everyone takes a little piece. But what we're missing here is that Jesus would have taken this one piece of flat bread, okay? That he's saying, this represents my body. Hmm. He would have broken that one piece. And I imagine him passing it to the left and passing it to the right. And each one of them breaking a piece off of the one Right. which really is way more symbolic of the idea that, look, this is my body that's going to be broken for you. And, 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 and he doesn't say, this is my body. He said, do this in remembrance of me. Mm. 
-hmm. And even Paul in Corinthians comes back and reiterates yeah, this, yeah, that whenever you eat or you drink, you, you know, you remember the death of the Lord until he returns. And that's, that's exactly uh, the, the meaning of the communion, so remembering. It's a remembrance. So the Bible doesn't, or Jesus doesn't really say, I am in this bread. No. no. Well, what's important is G the reason why they, they, they use the Seder is to show that there is no temple sacrificial symbolics in it. It's all symbolic. And if you go to Matthew, if you go to Matthew, it's very interesting. Matthew 26, it says, Jesus, uh, it says there, uh, Matthew 26, 26, as they were eating, after they haven't eaten, Jesus takes the bread. This is what happens at the Seder today. After there is a meal during the Seder, and then there is what's known as afikaman. Right, the last thing that you eat. Afikaman, it's a Greek word for dessert. Right. But they didn't have this cake and stuff like this. Back then, for them, dessert was aftertaste. Yeah. So this, they break this Little, little bread, little matzah, and they eat it to create the aftertaste. Aftertaste is the good memory trigger. And so Jesus takes the afikomen and he says, that's my body, that's what has to be your aftertaste. That's what has to stay in your memory. Mm. The fact that I, uh, I am dying for you. And of course, we have to also remember that in the Jewish tradition, there is a cup sitting on the table that the no book, nobody right. drinks. Right. And the Elijah, it's, it's a long story, but to make it short, of course, Elijah didn't die. So Jews believe that Elijah may actually come. Back. And, and visit them. And, and even during the, the, the Passover Seder, I remember as a kid being asked to get up at one point in the, in the Seder, in the meal, um, and go and open the door and everyone waits for a moment to see if Elijah is, is going to come. But it is interesting that the coming of Elijah is described in the last book of the Old Testament, the Malachi. And it says that when Elijah comes, that's when the day of the Lord comes, awesome and fearful. And so nobody dare to drink that cup of Elijah because that's, that's, that's his. Oh, judgment, you know. Yeah. And look what happens in Gethsemane. Mm -hmm. Jesus Drinks. sweats with blood and he says, Lord, take Father, this cup may take this mm. cup pass over me. Notice that. May this cup pass over me. He uses the Passover. Really? Yeah, the word. But Basically, save me like you save them, or yeah. But then he says, "Not no, I let will. your let your will be done. Uh, no, I'm going to drink the will. cup of judgment upon myself. I don't want to drink that cup of judgment. Mm -hmm. I want that Passover me, but it's yeah. not happening. But that wasn't what he was brought to do. Now let's, you know, there, there's still one cup left, right? Because we've talked about three cups. Yeah, we talk um, about cup of cup of uh, sanctification, sanctification, the cup of the cup plagues. of the plagues. After that, they cup eat of, the right, meal. No, after that, they eat the meal and afi common. Then, then cup of redemption, which is the one he's saying, take this. That's and the right. blood. And then and the then fourth cup. The fourth cup he doesn't drink, right? Yeah, but everybody else. Drinks. Everyone else, but he says, I will not drink again with you. That's the cup of praise. Right until I return. Awesome. Right? Um, which, yeah. So we're going to drink awesome. that fourth cup so, with Jesus? So that's, that's the one that he's looking forward to sharing with us mm. when, when he comes in the clouds and, and comes to return. So, you know, as, as you listen to this on today's program, um, I hope that this has inspired you and, and moved you. Um, Rachel and I have a song to share, and uh, we're going to go get ready, and, and Sasha's going to tell us about the song. Well, this is an interesting song from Psalm 22, uh, uh, and it's actually a prophetic psalm in which David portrays uh, himself, is portrayed as a suffering Messiah who is suffering the agonies of death, and that's one of the words, in you our fathers trusted and were not ashamed. <laughs>
Listen, I, I really hope that you have enjoyed our program today, that you see through that Passover celebration how Jesus revealed himself. May the Lord bless you and may he keep you and may the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and bring you his peace. Thank you and join us again on Back to Our Roots. <laughs>